I kind of wish I had more technical glitches. Um, <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, so as you mentioned, I'm going to talk about the Tree of Life. And essentially, I'm going to talk about it um, from my perspective as a computer scientist. So as a computer scientist, I'm interested in designing algorithms and software for tackling uh, challenging problems in science. And essentially, what we're going to do today is talk about um, how, the diver how the diversity of life is actually related. And the way we're going to do that is by exploring um, the tree of life. And the tree of life is this family tree which interconnects all of the world's organisms. So here I'm just showing you a portion of the tree. And the point that you should get here is that you know us humans think we're the center of the universe. And here we're just a little tiny speck on this tree. And as we sort of zoom out and start looking at animals and plants and protists, fungi and bacteria, we kind of see that this notion of how we are related to all of the world's organisms. And one of the things about this picture that I really like is that it seems really huge. And so there's about 3,000 organisms um, uh, shown in this particular figure. But in terms of the number of organisms that we know that exist out in the world, it's 2 million. So we're multi many levels of magnitude away from where we'd like to be in terms of showing the interconnectedness of life. So the, uh, what we know about the tree of life is actually in pieces. So there's researchers who work on salamanders. There's research that work on flowering plants. Um, there's researchers who work on insects. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> um, and so ultimately, what I want to do is with this Open Tree of Life project is to unify those different pieces or to unify those different views. And you can kind of think of this as a jigsaw puzzle piece where these different pieces of the tree of life are their own little separate universe. And ultimately, what we want to do is find their interconnection and make this unifying image. Now, I don't know about you, but when I buy a puzzle, I'm, I buy it based on the image that's on the box. When we're putting this puzzle together, we don't have an image. We don't actually know what the image looks like. Um, I won't buy a puzzle that has more than 250 pieces. Um, this particular puzzle, we think, has millions of different pieces. And there's probably just as many pieces that are missing. So what I want to do also now is sort of show you how we can actually start looking at a particular puzzle piece and think about what does it mean to be a family tree. So here I'm showing you uh, three breeds of domesticated dogs, and I'm showing a snippet of their DNA. And ultimately, this family tree shows how an ancestor from two million years ago gave rise to these domesticated dogs. And of course, humans always have to be in the picture. And so three million years ago, we had some um, ancestor that gave rise to domesticated dogs and humans. Now, I know a lot of you are in there, and you're like, oh my god, I love these dogs. It reminds me of French fry, or a poopsie, or whatever. And for me, I do not like dogs. <laughs> Um, in fact, dogs are not my best friend. They're not my BFF. They're just nothing about that at all. And so the thing is, is that even though I'm showing this animation is a little over the top in terms of my disconnectedness, the seriousness of the issue is that I have a real fear and anxiety um, when it comes to being around dogs. So when we look, think about evolution, which is how this is the basic foundational principle of putting together the tree of life, we see this image and it evokes a lot of different emotions from people. Some accept, some don't. But as I kind of think about it and I'm honest about my own disconnectedness with dogs, I can see how people um, have an aversion to saying that humans um, you know, came from apes. But this whole notion of diversity of life and uh, interconnectedness kind of even goes back further in terms of when we were children and we were given this puzzle that asked what does not belong. So already we're taught that difference means not belonging. And when you don't belong, you're X'd out, just like I X'd out those dogs in my um, evolutionary tree. So the tree of life, to me, basically is awesome because it doesn't say some, some aspect of life does not belong. Everything in life belongs, and it is this umbrella for relatedness. And so it doesn't care about similarities. It doesn't care about differences. It's about the combination of the two. The, the tree of life represents the similarities and differences in terms of how we are related to each other. So, the other aspect of the Tree of Life that's cool is that essentially it's a map of the world. And right now, we're just now being able to put together the border. And ultimately, the Tree of Life is not going to have any meaning until we can see ourselves in the picture. 
And so now when I think about the tree of life and its meaning to me, and I think about my neighbors, even though it's very terrifying to reach out to certain types of neighbors, I know that me as a human being have to not be afraid to reach over that fence and say hello, even if it's a tentative wave um, from the fence. And so as you guys are thinking about your own relationship to the tree of life, um, one of the things I would like to ask you is, do you feel disconnected to life's diversity in any way? And if so, uh, are those disconnectedness on fire? Thanks. Thank you. You're great.